श्री सचिदानंद सदगुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय दि सुप्रीम मास्टर बाय किराल भरद्वाज गार फिफ्थ चाप्टर दि मास्टर ऑफ मास्टर्स द ग्रेटने ऑफ ए सेंट कैन बी गॉज बाय द नंबर ऑफ सेंट्स ही हैड मेड ऑफ हिज डिसाइपल्स असिस्ड बाय दिस स्टैंडर्ड श्री स्वामी समर्थ इज पीरलेस अमॉन्ग सेंट्स it is not possible to write about all those who are made by him his veritable images in this small book there are as many as 25 of them and the life of each one of them would suffice a book we shall consider just a few of them shri nasimha saraswati the famous vithal swami of pandarpur was not only a great scholar but also a great yogi who was ever immersed in the bliss of yoga who can clear the doubts and difficulties that confront such stalwarts who can save them from difficulties which crop up in their spiritual adventure one day he started for akalkot to clear off a doubt or difficulty he encountered in his spiritual endeavor one day he started for akalkot to clear off a doubt or difficulty he encountered in his spiritual endeavor at the feet of shri swami samarth the swami was all knowing even before the news of yogi's arrival was delivered to him he asked the raja to get a deer skin spread in the middle of the road in front of him saying that a great yogi was coming for his darshan at noon vital swami arrived at the gate of royal palace and standing on the deer skin that was placed there had the darshan of the swami from a distance even before the yogi spoke out of his doubt spoke out his doubt swami samarth recited a sanskrit verse which explained how one of the six mystic centers in man called the agna chakra could be penetrated by yogi's consciousness and then cast yogi glances at vital swami at once the yogi attained the highest spiritual state called samadhi and experienced its supreme bliss continuously for two hours at that time the swami himself in a spirit high spiritual state called unmani cast his yogi glance again on the yogi and thereby brought him to normal consciousness then the swami directed the yogi to go and live at alandi accordingly the yogi stayed at alandi for 12 continuous years spending all his time in singing and chanting the holy name of god he attained great spiritual powers a number of devotees flocked around him to whom he ordained the singing of lord's name singing of the lord's name as sadhana he used to reward those who chanted well with gifts which he materialized by his powers after some time vithal swami again visited swami samarth who at that time stayed in the temple of shri rama even before the yogi arrived there the swami addressed him and said what you have not let off the courtesan yet none of his attendants understood to whom the words were addressed and what they meant after a while the yogi came to his presence bowed before him and said master i am ready to do so but your grace is needed the swami smiled benignly and asked his attendants to spread a deer skin on the ground vithal swami stood on that took his darshan and went away the word courtesan referred to the yogic powers which vithal swami displayed to his devotees later he became famous as shri narsimha saraswati a saint of great power shri bidkar maharaj ramanand bidkar was deeply religious even from his childhood he lost his father in his childhood visited many holy places and later settled at pune as a dealer in jewels and sandalwood out of a great desire for wealth he somehow succeeded in learning the secret of alchemy and amassed a lot of wealth consequently he fell a victim to many vices when he went to gwalior on business he was enticed he was enticed by women in his infatuation for her he hastily promised to take care of her all through her life but all the time he was feeling guilty when she died a little later he was thought that his problem was settled but he could not control his lust one day while talking to sadhu he revealed his spiritual urge and also his weakness the sadhu laughed derisively and said yoga is not for one like you one who could not give up his weakness bidkar was stung to the quick and he vowed to win the respect of the sadhu at any cost at once bidkar proceeded to a temple of maruti and started reciting holy anjaneya kavacha incessantly for going food and drink anjaneya kavacha incessantly for going food and drink one night he received a divine injection injunction to proceed to akalkot he at once went there but as swami samarth stayed in private apartments of raja he could not see him 
then he would not to think of food and drink till he had the darshan of the swami and spent two nights chanting the swami's name incessantly the swami who till then tested the determination of his devotee at once jumped the palace wall and gave him darshan he then asked why are you bowing to me bidka replied so that the foundation of my spiritual life might be strong the swami then pointed in one direction and said see there there bidka found a deer skin hung on the wall thinking that swami might be there by prescribing yoga for him the visitor said but i do not know anything about it what ignorance the swami thundered and he put foul abuse on him devotee chola pa and sundara bai whispered a caution to beatkar you have a family if the swami gets angry you would be destroyed beware beatkar humbly said to the swami whether you kill me or save me i seek refuge at your holy feet i shall expect accept your foul abuse as a sweet blessing the swami did not calm down your purpose is accomplished get away from here he roared Beedkar stood stupefied the swami cast yogi glances at him and beedkar's beedkar's body quivered under the impact after a parting salute beedkar happily left for pune there he found that without any effort on his part in his mind was saturated his mind was saturated with wisdom gnana and the dispassion vairagya introverted it was always locked up in the incessant japa or chanting of the holy word holy word beedkar we have to note that like shri sai baba of shirdi shri swami samarth often heaped abuse on his devotees once when a close devotee asked him for a reason shri sai baba replied it is not abuse it is blessing similarly when the swami cried get away from here to beedkar the words were aimed at the ignorance that enveloped beedkar's heart author Beedkar took Shri Swami's darshan on a full moon day in the month of Magh, February March. Then the Swami said to him, "This mango, that is Beedkar's faith, is half ripe. Half ripe. When it is completely ripe, the job is done." After three years, Beedkar returned to Akal Court and resolved to serve the Swami till he gave him initiation. One day he went on massaging the legs of Swami, but the latter did not ask him to stop at any stage. The whole night passed like that. Perhaps the Swami wanted to test him. A few hours before sunrise, a huge cobra stood between the legs of sleeping Swami, hissing fiercely at Bidkar, but he did not fear it. Instead, he said to himself, "It is a good fortune to die while serving the Swami." The master woke up suddenly and cried you are an obstinate devil and slapped him on his cheek and said get out you obstinate fellow in the great bliss of mystic experience bidkar fell down senseless the devotees carried him to the neighboring room when he woke up bidkar was happy to realize that he was in samadhi state on bidkar's subsequent visit the swami said am i indebted to your elder stay here and serve me it is said that these cryptic words actually meant that his that is bidkar's purpose was fulfilled and that he was to feed a thousand people bidkar immediately proceeded to pune purchased a thousand rupees worth of sands and uh, started back to akal court on the way his horse grew restive and many of the scent bottles were broken causing a heavy loss to bidkar however he fed the swami the swami smiled at him and said you have fed me but you have not given me dakshina the offering of money to the guru what would you give me will you give me enough bidkar bowed to him and said as much as you demand the swami looked at him doubtfully and said you can't but when bidkar took a note that he would offer anything that his master asked him the swami said then your offering shall be this giving up on the pract- give up giving up of the practice of alchemy bidkar who never anticipated such a demand was stunned and the swami smiled at his plight bidkar bowed and at last made up his mind to obey the swami's command After some time Beedkar again came for Swami's darshan this then Shri Swami Samarth ordered him never to come for his darshan again and told him to go on a holy trek around the uh, river Narmada Narmada Pradakshina accordingly the disciple undertook his trek and in course of it had a miraculous escapes from danger which he faced from tigers and serpents in the forest the invisible hand of the great master had protected him all through by the time he finished the circambulation pradakshina 
circumambulation prediction of the holy river the presiding goddess of the river granted him darshan besides she also directed great signs like uh, uh, shri vasudevananda saraswati and shri swami sachidananda to bless bitkar with their darshan when he proceeded to the sacred place maheshwar he heard the news that shri swami samarth had laid down his physical body bitkar could not control his grief he broke down and wept like a child that night the master appeared before him physically and said i did not die i am fully alive this instant is enough to set at the rest any doubts regarding the resur- resurrection of christ in the bible after concluding his pilgrimages bitkar established a mat near pune and settled here his profound realization and his great mystic powers made him a great saint who attained fame as shri bitkar maharaj After a life of hectic spiritual ministration he laid down his body on April 4 1930 Shri Swami Shri Sitaram Maharaj he who attained great fame as a great yogi and a jivan mukta that is the one who is liberated by alive as Shri Sitaram Maharaj was the son of one Bapura Vinayak Subedar of Satara At the age of 12 he left his home to escape the inhumanity of his stepmother and came to Sri Swami Samarth he lavished all his love which was due to his father mother guru and god and uh, god on the swami and served him with total dedication though the boy was not at all learned the master was much pleased with his devotion and one day he blessed him by putting his hand on boy's head Within a short period of 6 years the boy became a great siddha purusha one endowed with great spiritual powers one day swami blessed him and said go back to the place when uh, where once uh, when uh, you have come from where you have come sitaram reached mangal vedha and stayed there for 40 years he was ever immersed in the bliss of the self he became famous as sri sitaram maharaj he used to go for arms at noon and received the same in his hands karatala bhiksha after noon after lunch he used to retire to the cremation ground for meditation the one construction that he gave to all uh, the fun instruction that he gave to all those that sought his guidance was this contemplate on the holy name incessantly do not strive for scholarship learn to see god everywhere He knew the time and date on which his earthly life was to end far in advance. Fifteen days prior to that day, he told his devotees, Your mad Sitaram will soon pass away. The event took place in a village called Karadi, nine miles from, Parandar, from Pandarpur. Yavan Aulia Aulia is an Arabic word which denotes a yogi of great powers. The original name of celebrated Aulia of Maindargiri was, was Jamadar. He was a supervisor of prisons. He had to take care of prisoners during their outlook, outdoor work and see that they were safely locked up by evening. One day, one of the prisoners gave him a slip and Jamadar was afraid that his spotless career would suffer a black mark on the eve of his retirement. Finding no other way out, he thought of the Swami and vowed that if he by his grace, the prisoner would brought back, he would give up on his job and devote the rest of his life to his service. Next morning a constable found the prisoner near a canal and caught him while confessing his guilt in the court the prisoner gave an account of his rearrest thus at first i escaped and hid myself in that canal when i planned to run away from there a sadhu appeared before me and forced me to stay there i simply could not run away jamadar jamadar was immensely grateful to swami samarth for his prompt help uh he w- he at once left the job and started serving the master a little later one day the master flew into a rage and hurled his wooden shoes at this new attendant and commanded him to go home jamadar took the padukas as a sacred gift from the master went home and started worshiping them but his fellow muslims would not tolerate his idol worship and even drove him out of his house Jamadar was very patient in the face of such odds and continued the worship in another place by the grace of the master he never had to starve when people flocked to him for relief from the sufferings he used to give them vibhuti the holy ash that was consecrated by the swami or the dust or the dust that he picked up from under the feet of the swami both proved equally effective and he soon attained fame as peer sahib maharaj 
people of all classes caste and communities used to flock him and gift and gifts offered to him swelled some of the co-religionists who objected earlier to the worship of shri swami swami spadukas now tried their best to join him but he never cared for them he raised a shrine for the holy padukas of the master shri anandnath maharaj before becoming a famous saint through his contact with the swami he was a dealer in ayurvedic herbs he heard of shri swami samarth from a doctor and came to akal court for darshan while uh, he was washing his feet in a tank at the foot of a huge banyan tree a small twig fell on his head and then he looked up he saw the swami there up up the swami kept his hand on the visitor's head as a sign of blessing at once there was an outburst of intense dispassion vairagya in his heart as a result he stayed at he stayed on at akal court for 6 long years as digambara that is as one who does not mind his dress or one who is naked he spent most of his time singing devotional songs and chanting the lord's name in presence of the swami one day swami mysteriously materialized holy padukas made of the alloy of five metals panchalohas and gave them to the devotee and ordered him to go elsewhere and establish them in a mat Though the padukas were hardly half an inch in length they had all the marks of swami's feet imprinted marks of the swami's feet imprinted on them accurately the disciples subsequently became famous as shri anandnath maharaj he established mats at iola hodavade and dhavde he enshrined the haoli padukas in the mat at dhavde he also composed the verses and devotional songs that are being sung even today in the daily services of shri swami samarth he used the divine powers with which the swami had graced him to ameliorate and suffer ameliorate the sufferings of his devotees his glorious life on earth came to close came to a close in 1904 on jeshta suddha shashti june july at a place called vengurla shri tata maharaj ramachandra venkatesh bar borodkar uh, was a gauda brahmin was a Bra- gauda brahmin a resident of bombay he was a dealer in herbs he was keenly interested even from his childhood in the worship of lord shiva and was a frequent visitor to the lord, uh, temple of lord babulnath in uh, bombay one day lord shiva appeared in his dream and directed him to take darshan of his manifestation at akal court later when he visited akal court shri swami samarth at once referred to his dream vision and also gave him darshan in the form of lord shiva borodkar shuddered at the vision the swami manifested he manifested to him and the divine forms of vishnu and brahma borodkar fell at the swami's feet and cried lord i cannot bear the sight of this divine form please appear to me in the form of a yati renunciate The Swami gazed at him most benignly and said, "What is there to see? I shall myself enter your heart." So saying, he touched the heart of Borodkar. At once, the disciple attained the blessed state of samadhi. Divine forms also dawned in him spontaneously. Soon, he became famous as Shri Tata Maharaj and devoted his powers for the service of the people and drew many of them onto the path of onto the path spiritual. His manner of curing diseases was strange. he used to receive was strange he used to receive holy water tirtha from the hands of the patient and through that he used to take away the disease even after shri swami's niryana shri tata maharaj used to assure his devotees swami is still alive and is with us i can show him to you one proof of his claim might be noted here balakrishna boa sir suratkar was a devotee of shri swami samarth in his early life but after listening to the lectures of swami dayananda he lost all his faith at that stage shri tata maharaj not only revived faith in the heart of balak balakrishna boa but also graced him with the experience of samadhi for eight continuous days shri rangoli maharaj shivaram bavedkar shivaram babdekar was born in a goldsmith family in the court of raja of kolhapur when he was 8 his aunt took him with her for the darshan of shri swami samarth swami looked at him and asked the lady will you give the boy to me and without waiting for her reply took the boy on his lap and addressed him as rangoli maharaj then he directed him to serve the wandering saint named kumbhar potter swami who lived in the kumbhar street uh, 
ಕುಂಬಾರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹೂ ಲಿವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕುಂಬಾರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆರ್ಡರ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ರಿಮೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲಿಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ವ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಮಾಲಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಕೇಪ್ ಕಮೋರೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯನ್ ಆಕರ್ ರೋಪ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿಮ್ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಬಾಯ್ ಬ್ಲೂಸಮ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಸೆಲಿಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೇಂಟ್ ರಂಗೋಲಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಹಾವೆವರ್ ರಂಗೋಲಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕೆಪ್ಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮಿರಾಕ್ಲಸ್ ಪವರ್ಸ್ ಹಿಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಐ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ವಿಸಿಟೆಡ್ ಶಿರೋಡ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ the people took him for a spy he used to stay in the cloth shop of one prabhu angonkar he smoked bds excessively but he re- never asked anyone for the money to buy them with he had a strange habit he used to throw away the half smoked bds sorry bds on the road without extinguishing them one day the shopkeeper noticed it and warned him not to do so rangoli maharaj replied know that a lord anjaneya will beat you and that your shop will no longer exist strangely enough the shopkeeper went bankrupt very soon rangoli maharaj used to draw beautiful designs in rangoli colored powder with which uh, ornamented designs were drawn on the ground on festive occasions which inspired intense devotion in the heart hearts of onlookers he is said to have attained nirvana in 1941 Shri Balapa Maharaj, among all the disciples of Shri Swami Samardhavan, who is worthy of being described as his very image, is Balapa Maharaj. He was a Yajurvedi Brahmin and a native of Haveri in the district of Dharwar. Before he became a saint, he was a jeweler and a money lender who enjoyed life till his 30th year. At that time, he experienced a mysterious inner transformation, left all his possessions and went in search of a Sadguru, a perfect master. He spent three nights in meditation at Margod near the Samadhi tomb of Sri Chidambar Dikshit and then reached Gangapur. There he spent all day in sadhana. In the evening, he begged food from five houses, washed it in the river and ate. He used to sleep at Ganga, uh, Gangapur during nights and carry on his devotions by day near the Sangam, the confluence of rivers. Bhima and Amaraja. At the end of two months, the Lord appeared to him in a dream in the form of a Brahmin lad and directed him to go to Akal Kot. When he woke up, he found a chit by his side on which he was uh, found scribbled, Do not be in hurry. Balappa uh, spent two more months there in penance. One night, Sri Swami Samarth appeared in his dream. At once, Balappa started on his uh, trek to Akal Kot, chanting the name of Sri Swami Samarth. He reached Akal Kot and saw the master on the holy day of Sri Ramanavami, the day of the Lord Rama's birth. Took the darshan of the Swami and stayed in the temple of Sri Murali Dhar. As there was a huge crowd of devotees, Balappa could not get the consecrated gift prasada at the hands of the Swami. It was the want of, uh, it was the want of uh, Sri Swami Samarth not to give prasada to those whom uh, he wanted to retain in his service. Balappa learned this and started serving the master by washing his pitam. Gradually, his service extended to cooking and feeding the Swami. One day, while distributing dates to the devotees, the Swami did not give any, ba- any to Balappa. Balappa felt it keenly. The Swami soon sent uh, for him and put two dates in his hand. But when Balappa was overjoyed at the gift, suddenly the Swami snatched the fruits from his hand and ran away. Tears of disappointment stood in Balappa's eyes. Later one day, Sri Swami Samar took out a sugary candy from his mouth and gave it to Balappa, who at once ate it to avoid any possible disappointment. The Swami burst out laughing at the sight of it. One day, as usual, when Balappa bowed to the Swami before sitting for meditation, the thought passed, the thought passed in his mind that he was not able to meditate proper, properly. The Swami at once slapped him forcefully on his back and all his mental wavering stopped. Henceforth, the Swami bestowed any special attention and care regarding Balappa's sadhana at every step. One day, the Swami gave him a rosary of tulasi beads. As the time of his Niryana approached, the Swami specially sent for Balappa and gave him his own ring and the garland of Rudrakshas and a shirt which he was wearing. Finally, he gave him um, uh, Atma Padukas which he materialized from his mouth and told Balappa to enshrine them in a mat 
and asked him to live under a audumbar fig tree then the swami blessed him by keenly key, uh, by keeping his hand on balappa's head and said i am giving away all my powers and authority to you when balappa when balappa was searching for a place suitable for meditation Sri Anjaneya appeared to him and directed him to a proper place in accordance with the swami's orders Balappa established a mat in which he enshrined the padukas given to him by the swami after the niryana of shri swami samartha balappa continued his mission of guiding people on the spiritual path for 32 years at the time of his niryana balappa maharaj made his disciple shri gangadhar maharaj his uh, successor the later uh, was succeeded by shri gajanan maharaj who is the now head of the math as satguru in his own right shri gajanan maharaj was born in a rich family at raipur his father shri shivananda swami was a great siddha purusha perfected uh, being and was considered to be a manifestation of lord shiva his samadhi is situated at a place 2 miles from akkal kot today his descendant shri gajanan maharaj is considered to be a great satguru this book this book was blessed by shri gajanan maharaj on the holy vijayadashmi day in 1973 the son of shri swami samarth or shri swami suta when govind rai when govind rao a rich man and an employee in bombay municipality went to gangapur in 1868 on pilgrimage accompanied by a brahmin cook there his devotions were crowned with success when lord datta appeared to him in a dream and told him my real form is at akal kot go there Govind Rao immediately went there to see Sri Swami Samarth. Every day he used to offer the food cooked by the Brahmin to the Swami. One day the master told him, "Take this food to the outskirts of the village and give it to the fakir and his dog, which you find in the mosque." Accordingly, Govind Rao went to the mosque and found there a fakir and a dog. He served the food to them and returned to Swami Samarth with a small piece of roti and a little porridge left in the vessels. Swami Samarth told Govind Rao to take the remaining food as prasada. but the latter hesitated to eat it because he considered the fakir and a dog unholy the swami got wild and said your devotion has not yet ripened stay here and worship the padukas however the brahmin cook eagerly took the prasada and ate it the swami was much pleased with him and said go to bombay you will get 10000 rupees the brahmin was overjoyed and at once proceeded to bombay and started searching for the money in the roadside dustbins One morning when he stood by a dust heap a lady beckoned to him from a nearby house and handed him a bundle of 100 rupee notes gave him 10000 rupees as a gupta dana or a secret gift which is customary in some families in maharashtra and a necessary sequel to the demise of a dear one it so happened that on the previous day that lady owed that she would give away the dana gift of money to whomsoever she might encounter first on the next morning and as for the blessing of shri swami samarth it fell to the lot of the good brahmin cook A merchant by name Lakshman Pandit heard of the bow incident and wrote to the Swami that if all his debts were cleared within eight months, he would take his darshan. Not long after, he gained a profit of two thousand rupees, with which he cleared all his debts and at once went to Swami's darshan. Another employee in the Bombay municipality by name Hari Bhavu also accompanied him. When the three visitors, the Brahmin cook Lakshman and Hari Bhavu, stood before him, Sri Swami Samarth looked at Lakshman, smiled, and said, "There was loss in business, and again there was profit after taking a vow." Then, after a little pause, he roared, "Get out, you rogues!" Strangely enough, merely on hearing the words of Swami, all the three visitors experienced the exalted spiritual state of samadhi. state of samadhi later when they regained normal consciousness the swami said to lakshman tie up your turban to the brahmin cook he said go to the bazaar get a new dhoti and tie it around your head the swami pulled hari bhavu by his hand and said give up your occupation come and live here as my child get purer and purer and draw close to me hari bhavu could not understand the import of the swami's words and asked him for elucidation without answering him the swami simply said get silver padukas for him for me 
Taking leave of the Swami, Haribhava reached Bombay, but he found that his heart was completely won over by the Master. He had no other desire than to live in the presence of Swami. Immediately, he left all his possessions and taking silver padukas with him, he reached Akal Court. The Swami stood up to receive the padukas and wore them for two weeks. Many of the attendants tried to take them from the Swami as prasada, but the Swami said, They are my Atmalinga. I shall never part with them. After 15 days, he sent for Haribhava and told him, Give up all your activities and be my child. Establish a mat on the seashore and hoist the flag of Dharma. Then he made Bhavu sit and stand thrice, touched the Padukas once more with his feet and gave them to Hari Bhavu with the ins- instruction to enshrine them in his mat. Before we proceed further, we must note an incident that took place on the night previous to the above incident. At midnight, the Swami woke up and approached the banyan tree, gently tapped it thrice with a conch and muttered as though to some invisible spirits, Get away from this place, our children were, our children are sleeping here below. Haribhavu woke up and touched the Swami's feet. When everyone else was asleep, the Swami whispered something in his ear, gave him all the proper insignia of, of a sannyasi, such a long-sleeved shirt, such as long sleeved shirt and told him to give up the life of a householder. The next day, Haribhavu wore the ochre rope in this, uh, which the Swami gave him, took the padukas and returned to Bombay. There, he gave away all his belongings in charity, gave a white sari and a veena to his wife and told her to dedicate herself for the service of the Lord. Later, he established muds in Bombay, Chitchan, Ahmadnagar, Pune, Thana, Vasai, Ratnagiri and Chip- Chilplam. Haribhav was henceforth known to all as the son of the Swami. He used to visit his Guru father thrice a year. At Akal Court, he used to stay alone in the temple of Lord Muradidhar, wrapped in meditation. How dearly the Swami loved the disciple can be seen from the following episode. One night when the Swami was asleep, a visitor and advocate performed arti to him. The Swami suddenly woke up and sternly addressed the advocate, You have left my Hanuman, devout servant, in darkness. And you come here to ask my favors, first go and attend his needs. Attend to his needs. At first the advocate could not understand anything. Then he was led by another attendant to the temple of Lord Muralidhar where Swami Sutta was seated in meditation in the dark. Henceforth, every day before going for Swami's darshan, the advocate used to keep a lamp burning in front of Swami Sutta. Three or four years later, when Swami Sutta visited his master, the latter told him that his earthly life was drawing to close and uh, that his mission to be continued by him, that is Swami Sutta. Swami Sutta was shocked at the revelation even on his way back to Bombay he felt a deep longing to give up his body even earlier than his guru immediately he fell ill on hearing the news Sri Swami Samarth sent two devotees Sri Padabhat and Krishna Pa to fetch Swami Sutta to him the latter guessed what his master wished to tell him and so refused to go with them he was unbudging even after a second Summon from his master on hearing about his disciples resolve the swami spoke sternly if he does not come i shall destroy his house the necessary guns are already with us in the dark in the darker half of the month of shramana july august on padyami on padyami first day of the after the new moon uh, first day after the new moon swami sutta attained yoga samadhi the swami knew it even before any message reached him he was seated with his head bent low in a gesture of profound grief. Shortly, the message arrived. The mother of Swami Sutta, Srimati Kakkubai, who was there, broke down in grief. And the Swami said to her, Don't grieve. He is as much as a child to me as to you. I am as much as child... I am as much a child of yours. I have sent his soul to a glorious state, believe my word. After this incident, the Swami was often found crying, Peacock, Peacock. No one understood what he meant. The Raja of Akal Court took his words literally and got a real peacock, but the Swami never cared even to look at it. To a lady devotee, the master uh, said that he wanted a ball of mercury. This request was no less puzzling to her. By the time one of the devotees of late Swami Sutta arrived from Bombay to request Swami Samar to provide a deserving successor to the seat of uh, Swami Sutta in Bombay, the Swami did not reply. Soon the younger son of Srimati Kakku by aged 8 seen, came to see his mother. When mother and son came for his darshan, the Swami burst out laughing, turning his face towards the wall. Then he ordered the visitor to take the young boy to Bombay, make him the successor of Swami Sutta's Matpur Kakku by was 
was sure that her second son also was to become uh, a sannyasi but the swami did not heed her tears at all the boy uh, the boy was uh, promptly taken to bombay but he had to be brought back again because he refused to be ordained as the head of mat the swami immediately said to his attendants take this tiger skin and make him stand on that take this garland and put it around his neck take these padukas and put them on his head he then gave them all the three articles mentioned although the ser- all through the ceremony the master was personally fanning the young head of the mat shri of the mat Shrimati Kakubai was no longer sad for what greater fortune could fall to her son than to be so honored and loved by the swami himself she even said to him oh swami you have made him who is not worthy even to stand at your feet so big and you are personally serving him but again when the time of his uh, taking sanyasa arrived she could not control her grief the swami the ceremony went on strictly according to swami's directions but one fact struck everyone with wonder the moment the stars master's padukas uh, were kept on the boy's head his attitude suddenly changed and henceforth he welcomed all the proceedings perhaps such ought to be the spiritual transformation which is to be effected in all the religious rites like the brahmopadesha of hindus and baptism of the christians and so on otherwise how could they be referred to as the second birth dvija or being born again poor kakku bai wailed and knocked her head against the wall in protest the swami was unmoved there will not be the slightest change in my resolve he said once an order is inscribed on stone no one can alter even a syllable in it Then the swami took the boy in his lap and gazing at him with deep love and said Kakuba is not your mother nor are you her son you are just mine after blessing the master christened uh, christened him as uh, sachidananda swami kumar and made him the head of the mat of swami suta brahmachari vaman bhuva Vaman Bhuva, a native of Pombori district Anandanagar, was from his boyhood days a devotee of Lord Dattatreya. Tatreya. Though he changed many jobs and met many sadhus, he could not get inner peace. One day, while at Pune, he heard a brahmachari celibate sadhu declare a life without the grace of Sadhguru is worthless. He immediately asked the brahmachari whether he met any Sadhguru himself. The latter replied, go to Akalkot, Lord Datta himself is there in human form. Vaman Bhuva started on his journey in the year 1861-1783 Saka era. But the Swami was in village named Harda. Though uh, he approached the village, he could not enter it because the nearby uh, rivulet was in flood. So he prostrated to the Swami from the distance only. But to his wonder, the saint easily walked across the river, came to Vaman Bhuva and said, Serve me, be established in Brahman, surrender your possessions to me. At once, Vaman Bhuva threw away all his clothes and be- uh, belongings and just wore a kaupina, caught piece. The Swami then gave him an uh, ascetic uh, water container, Kamandalu, uh, Kamandalu. Uh, later vaman bhuva used to visit swami twice or thrice a year in 1871 saka, uh, saka 1793 during the pilgrimage vaman bhuva visited the shrine of his family goddess saptashringi at the end of worship vaman bhuva requested the priest to give him pan betel that was placed between the beta, between the lips of idol in the temple but the priest refused to comply with his absurd request vaman bhuva then bowed to goddess and addressed her thus mentally mother if your grace is on our family may the pan come to me at once the fa pan fell on his palms to the amazement of the priest and the others later vaman bhuva took the water of holy godavari to pandarpur and bathed the lord's feet with it at that moment he clearly saw shri swami samarth in the place of shri panduranga idol subsequently when he returned to swami at akkal kot even before he uttered a word the swami himself said as you went to shapta shringi and were making a lot of noise for the pan i had to come there and give it to you i have also received the holy godavari water that you offered at pandarpur at the pot head or the heart of the devotee is still only half baked without running here and there henceforth stay at one place immersed in supreme bliss this confirmed to vaman bhuva that swami was lord was the lord datta himself so he stayed long in saint's company 
in 1876 circa 1798 vaman boafel ill and suffered uh, from severe cough motions piles and such other diseases which defied all treatment he wrote a letter to swami about this but there was no reply at last unable to bear the suffering any longer he tried to commit suicide by jumping into a deep tank named sur sagar but at the precise moment he felt he was held back by someone from behind and when he turned back he saw the swami himself standing behind him after gazing at him for a moment in slight disapproval the swami slapped him twice and said where can you escape while there is still some karma to be reaped by your body why are you angry with me instead of trying for spiritual realization samadhi why are you running for a watery grave then he took vaman buva to his mother and brothers and with a final assurance don't fear be calm if you behave like a madman i shall show you i shall show you the uh, swami disappeared soon vaman buva regained his health and went to akal court to see his guru immediately on seeing him the master said oh is it you that tried to commit suicide by jumping into a tank your life too would have been as useless as the tank and holding his belly with both hands he laughed loudly in 1901 saka 1823 vaman buva took formal sanyasa and uh, meditating on the holy name of master left his mortal frame shri krishna saraswati alias kumbhar swami Sri Krishna Saraswati alias Kumbhar Swami A pious couple prayed to Lord Dattatreya for a long time for progeny One night the Lord appeared to them in a dream and assured them I shall be born in your house the one who was to attain great fame as a jivan mukta as shri krishna saraswati was their divine child he was born in 1835 circa 1757 on maga krishna panchami fifth day in the darker half of february march even in his boyhood he was taken by his parents for the darshan of swami of akal court on seeing the boy the great master at once rose up and led him by the hand to the near into the nearby jungle there he sat on a huge stone and spoke thus to the boy who was seated at his feet you are part of me you are born to do good to others and then blessed him at once the boy experienced a deep samadhi for 7 days on the 8th day on the 8th day the swami lovingly passed his hand over the boy's head and restored him to the worldly consciousness then the swami ordered him to live at kolhapur assuming the life that befits as jivan mukta that is free that is the free life of a madman a child and a possessed man balon matta pisa chavritti For some time the young saint Sri Krishna Saraswati continued to serve his master at Akkal court. One day the Swami said, "Why has not our Brahmin turned up yet?" Nobody could understand the significance of his words. But in a few days a Brahmin did turn up. He was suffering from an incurable white leprosy. He first restored to the service of Lord Dattatreya at Gangapur as his only hope. There he received the divine guidance that he should go to Akkal court. On his arrival Sri Swami Samarth lent a patient ear to his tale of woe and finally said go and serve Sri Krishna Saraswati and you shall be cured of disease accordingly the brahmin accompanied Sri Krishna Saraswati to Kolhapur and served him very devotedly pleased with his service Sri Krishna Saraswati cured him of his of his disease in a short time in his powers and attainments of uh, Sri Krishna Saraswati closely resembled the swami as the swami already said he was a part of the swami there is another piece of evidence to prove that once a brahmin owed to offer milk sweets to swami if he was blessed with children but with the passage of time he forgot all about the woe through his uh, though his wish was full he fulfilled by the time he again remembered it the swami already left his earthly abode the brahmin who was very sore and his one strong wish was to put the milk uh, sweets in the mouth of the swami with his own hands but how could he fulfill it one night the swami appeared in his dream and told him that he was living in kolhapur in the kambar uh, kumbhar galli galli mein street in the form of shri krishna saraswati and he fulfilled like and he could fulfill fulfill his vow there the brahmin visited shri krishna saraswati and after proper worship put the sweets in the saint's mouth with his own hands Shri Kelkar Maharaj in the year 1847 circa 1769 Ramchandra Kelkar was born as the son of poor railway employee 
In his eighth year, the boy suffered from acute pain in his stomach. Unable to bear the pain, the boy desperately thought, "If there is God, I must be free from any trouble, from my trouble within a week. If I am, I shall dedicate all my life to His service." Exactly as the boy wished, the pain mysteriously vanished. In accordance with his vow, the boy at once left his home and stayed with accordance with his vow. The boy stayed with Sri Swami Samarth for three years. In accordance with his oath, the boy at once left his home and stay with, uh, stayed with Sri Swami Samarth for three years. Pleased with his service, the Swami blessed him with the spiritual power. Then he returned to Bombay and served Sri Swami Sutta for four months. In 1873, circa 1795, Brahmachari Bhuva uh, brought marble datta padukas to Chip Chiplam, gave them to a school teacher, and asked him to worship them till their man came. The person referred to as their man by the prophetic Brahmachari Bhuva was none other than Ramachandra Kelkar. Exactly at that time, Sri Swami Sutta sent Kelkar to Chiplam. Later, when Kelkar received the news of the Niryana of Sri Swami Samarth, he could not bear his separation from his guru and took a vow to fast unto death. On the third day, the Swami appeared to him in his dream and said, "I am alive. I am carrying on my mission. Do not fast unto death." Before Kelkar left from Chilplum, Sri Swami gave him silver padukas and a staff and told him to beg his food every Thursday. The master assured him that he would thereby have no need to face want at any time in his life. A strange yogi. There was a strange family at the Mindergiri. All the members of the family of that family were mad. In course of time, all of them died except one. A native of the same town, who was a devotee of Swami of Akalko, took pity of the lone mad man and took him to Akalko for the blessings of Swami. Where he, when he prayed to Swami to save the madman, the latter kept quiet. The latter kept quiet. For fifteen days, the madman stayed in the presence of Swami, and on sixteenth day, the Swami sent him back to Mayendragiri. In the course of a few more days, a startling transformation took place in him, and he was no longer a lunatic, but a great saint whose word would never go in vain. Many people flocked to him and tried to induce him to say something positive about their wishes and plans. Mostly, he never yielded to any inducements. He used to keep quiet. One day, a supplicant was vexed with his silence and cried, "What do you lose by saying yes to my wish? Don't you like to see my plans succeed?" The saint replied that if he spoke recklessly, the Swami of Akal Court would thrash him and skin him. However, the strange yogi did a lot to alleviate the sufferings of the people. Ashwant Rao once Sri Swami Samar Ashwant Rao once Sri Swami Samarth gave a salagrama, a sacred stone found in Giver Gandaki, to one Ashwant Rao Dev, who was a mamaltdar, and asked him to worship it. In a short time, Ashwant Rao became a great saint. His samadhi can be seen at Nasik even today. Besides the large number of saints that the Swami has moulded, his unique spiritual state was acknowledged even by other celebrated saints of his time. We shall note a few of them. Sri Vasudeva Nanda Saraswati, alias Timbe Mah Timbe Maharaj, was considered as a manifestation of Lord Dattatreya by his many devotees. One day, a devotee by name Baved uh, Babdekar wanted to perform a great yagna, Vedic ritual, in his. Uh, Presence at Narsimhavadi. Tembe Maharaj heard his wish and said that either it should be performed in the presence of Sri Swami Samartha of Akal Court, who was Lord Dattatreya himself, or it should be performed at Narsimhavadi only after taking his Sri Swami Samartha's consents and blessings. Baba Sabnis was the devotee of Sri Manik Prabhu, the third incarnation of Lord Datta, according to popular reckoning. A few days before his niryana, Sri Manikya Prabhu told Baba Sabnis, "Sri Akalkot Swami is avatar of Lord Datta Tarya himself. He is your guru." Henceforth, Baba Sabnis dedicated himself to the service of Sri Swami Samarth. Jai Sai Master.